at the member from Nashua. The chair recognizes uh, Representative Lee. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, and thank you, colleagues, for uh, granting this request for unanimous consent. Um, I come to the podium here um, with uh, some degree of reluctance um, and with a heavy heart, in a way. Um, this is my seventh year as a member of the New Hampshire House, um, and I won't lie. Um, I've been, uh, you know, by being given repeated opportunities to serve in this body, um, to serve the citizens of this great state is something that I take great pride in, as I think we all do. Um, yes, I am proud to serve here. I am proud to tell people that I am a legislator. Um, I am proud to tell people that I am a member of the New Hampshire House. Uh, but there have been recent events that are causing me at times to question that pride, to question and ponder what it is we may be becoming. And, and it's for that reason I asked to speak. Um, for years, I and many colleagues on both sides of, of the aisle have bragged in a way about how we differ from Washington, D.C. Um, here we are civil. Um, here we can disagree. Um, but still communicate. Here we can still find ground every now and then um, to come to bipartisan agreement, and we've done that repeatedly. Um, we all want to do what is best for the citizens of New Hampshire. And while we may disagree and we, may, and we do dispute on how to do that, uh, we do not question or impugn the motives of our colleagues. Um, these may be the old and sort of traditional rules by which decorum is maintained. Uh, but while we live in a society today that is experiencing rapid flux and change, uh, perhaps I would suggest we ought to pause to remember that not everything that is old and traditional should be discarded. We ought to keep these rules in mind. Um, and sadly, there have been times uh, recently where we seem to be slipping away from these praiseworthy notions and ideals. Um, we just had today someone possibly a member, I don't know, um, shouting coward at a member whose foreign policy views differed from his own. Um, I don't know if it was a member. In informal conversations on the House floor, um, we have apparently had a member you know, accusing another who served in the U.S. military that you're an embarrassment to the service, as if, as if any individual is the arbiter of what a veteran must stand for. Okay? We apparently had another informal comment made to a member telling him, you know, and I, I, I'm, it's not a quote, it's a, a paraphrase, you know, go back to Massachusetts with all the other communists. You know, these are comments, they're not on the record, okay? They're informal, but is this really what we stand for? Is this what we've become? Does this in any way serve the cause of civility and basic decorum and mutual respect? I don't think so. You know, we've also had a member uh, pursuing another from the parking ramp uh, to the State House, aggressively insisting that the member uh, discuss an issue, even though the member kept saying, I don't want to talk about that now. Look, no means no. All right, we have members wearing, you know, we've had the whole thing about paraphernalia, okay, uh, in hearings and things like that. I'm not going to get into that. But just remember, you know, if we take actions, actions have consequences. And we need to recognize that and we need to accept that. You need to own those, okay? Look, I'm not here to chastise any particular caucus. Neither caucus, if you take the long view, is blameless. If you take the historical view. But if we truly intend to serve the citizens of New Hampshire, we need to take a moment and think before we act. We need to think before we speak. If you don't want epithets and hurtful remarks made at your expense, don't do it to others. If you would not want to be verbally harassed, don't do it to others. If you don't want others publicly displaying their beliefs on an issue in a hearing or on the floor where impartiality is, is supposed to be the order of the day, don't wear the button. Don't wear the beads. The house will be in order. The member will be seated or be removed from the chamber. The house will be in order. We are still in session. The procedure is the member has stood and objected to the member's remarks and has withdrawn his consent unanimous consent. That is a question for the House now to decide. The it's been requested that unanimous consent be denied. That is a motion now before the House. Uh, shall, shall the member be allowed to continue? 
Yeah. If the motion will be a positive motion, as all motions are. The question now before the House is, shall the member now be allowed to continue? I will put that question to the body. And I will repeat the question one more time so everybody is clear. The question before the House is, shall the mem member continue with his unanimous consent? If you, a division has been called for, and a division is order. Um, this will be a division vote. Members will take their seat. We'll have a division vote. I don't read lips. You're going to have to come down and use the microphone if you want me to hear you. I can't. I can't. I have trouble hearing anyway. Is the question of the chair in order? Of course it is. I, I'm trying to figure this out. If this is unanimous consent, how can we have a majority vote on it? It would seem to me if one person objects, then it's no longer unanimous. The, that's not the intention. It's up to the body whether the member continues or not. Members, why does Representative Sitek has requested a roll call? Is that significantly sufficiently second? It is seconded. This will be a roll call vote. You have a parliamentary inquiry, then you have. Oh, you got to make it from the well. Mr. Speaker, I have a real inquiry, and in that I'm confused about it. When we talk about unanimous consent, we u we usually do that prior to someone speaking. If someone gets up and objects, then we take a vote. I didn't think that procedurally you could do that in the middle of a speech. Sure. So could that be clarified for me, please? Yes. Any time that a member in the party objects to somebody's unanimous consent, uh, they can object, as Representative Horn did. And now we're in the procedure for the body to determine whether that person should proceed with the unanimous consent or not. Representative Balsaro. Yes, uh, Mr. Speaker, this is a sad day here that we're counseled by a, somebody from the other side. And I know we're going to go to a vote, but a few the, years the, ago, the member will suspend. my question. And I ask you to suspend for this reason. We're now coming into the voting mode. It's I, not if. I have it, a parliamentary question then, Mr. Speaker. Well, let's get to the question. Okay. You cannot make a speech about what the person did or didn't do. The this honor of this House, a few years ago, one member spoke against a representative that could not speak, and it ended everything. No vote, no nothing. And we, re we, you know, we respect the House. I know there's going to be a question, Mark, Representative Baldessaro. I'm waiting is, for it. Why are we going to a vote when one person um, requested it stop, was against it, Warren, the member from before, that went through one from the other party, everything stopped. Why are we going to a vote? The vote is in order. Uh, Representative Ullery, do you have a question for the chair? Yes. Uh, Please state it. I recall earlier in my career here, the similar... I won't make a comment to that. Yeah, but. I know. Uh, this similar situation took place. Mm -hmm. The... Honorable Karen Wadsworth offered a different point of view at that time. Yeah. When the when and it happened to be me objected to the gentleman continuing his speak. Since it's unanimous consent, and unanimous consent was withdrawn, there's no need for a vote. Unanimous consent is withdrawn. Period. On the recommendation of our clerk and with the concurrence of the previous clerk, if the clerk wants to.
instead of me repeating what the clerk is telling me, I want everybody to have a clear picture of what's happening. And I'll recognize you in a minute, and I thank you. Uh, but I want the clerk to explain to me what he's uh, explaining to me at a sidebar, because I think the whole house should uh, hear it. And I want everybody to clear what we're voting on and why we're voting. And so I, I recognize the clerk to explain why Mr. we're. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is just a point of, of historical clarification. This has come up about three times in the past 10 years. One time when the vote was not put, there was, a, there was an acting speaker at the rostrum. It was the former member from Hopkinton. The speaker of the House at the time, the Honorable Terry Norelli from Portsmouth, on a subsequent day when asked about the question, specifically stated that she sh they, they vote should have happened. Fast forward a couple of years later, the situation the member from Londonderry raised, there was a vote put by rep when the former gentle lady from Concord objected to the gentleman's from Rochester situation. So that is the correct situation. A vote is correct. Representative Wolf, you had a question. I didn't, want to, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I wanted the clerk to explain that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I accept being cut off. Um, is a motion to adjourn an order? It is an order. A motion to adjourn would be an order. Then to maintain the decorum of this house and so we can all walk out together, I move we adjourn at this time. I thank uh, the member for his uh, motion, and I understand exactly why he made it, but there is a negative downside to the motion that was made. As you, a lot of you know, we receive messages on a daily basis here in the body, and many of you have been asked to, uh, to sit with to another member to accept member messages from the Senate uh, and from others. If we do adjourn, that ability to receive the messages which we are doing now on a daily basis would have to cease. And, um, and for that reason, I just want to make people aware of the negative uh, consequences of, of the members from uh, Newbury's motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the parliamentary straightening me out. Uh, could I ask the clerk then, would a motion to recess be in order? Does that take a precedence now? No, we don't have a precedence. Can you find me one that does take precedence? <laughs> I think he's looking right now. Uh... I don't have Masons with me. So. Um, yeah. A higher, as you know, we have a motion before us right now a higher motion than the motion before us that we are going to vote. Don't do that. As I was saying, we have a, a motion before us now to take a vote on. A higher motion would be to table, and that would end the so proceedings. tabling, and then we could go home at that point? Mm -hmm. I right. just want to make it right, Mr. Speaker. No, I, I know, and I, I realize, Representative Wolf, what you're doing, and I do greatly appreciate your efforts. What I'm saying, if a, if a motion to table were made, that would end the member's ability to speak, and then I would be given the last uh, motion of the day, which would adjourn us until the call of the chair. Is that a, the way to do it, Mr. Clerk? Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at both of you, and I'm looking for two heads to nod. <laughs> okay, then I withdraw my motion and I make a motion to table. Representative, Mo <laughs> the representative from Newbury, I won't call you by your, your name, the representative from Newbury makes a motion to table. The question before the House is the motion to table. Uh, representative Weber has requested a roll call. Is that significantly seconded? It is significantly seconded. This will be a roll call vote. Members will take their seats.
right. <laughs> the House will be in order. Members will kindly take their seats. The question before the House is the motion to table. If you're in favor of that motion, you'll press the green button. If you're opposed, you'll press the red button. Voting stations will be open for 30 seconds. Members should all be in their seats. Not mentioning any names, Representative Campion. Have all members present had an opportunity to vote? The House will attend to the state of the vote. With 152 members voting yay and 160 voting nay, the motion to table is defeated. The question now before the House is on the motion to... to the House will be in order as the members go for pizza. Why does the member rise? Inquiry of the Chair. Is the pending so, motion debatable? What's that? Is the pending motion debatable? I would think not. It would be like a motion to any motion to table or anything else. Uh, so it would not be, not be a debatable motion. This motion. What's that? This motion. For the member to continue? The, yeah, that's what the one I was addressing. Okay, this is, are you all ready for the, let me repeat the, are you all ready for the question? And members should be in their seats. Reverend Smith has requested a division vote this Uh, your stations have been turned off. Will you please turn them back on again? Yes. Representative uh, Smith has requested a division vote. This will be a division vote. Yeah. Oh. The member from Salem, you did. It's been a while of now, but uh, you did. Rec you did ask for a roll call. This will be a roll call vote. Yeah, members will take their seats, and we'll have a roll call. Members will come in who are out in the ante room. Well, I'm sorry. No, that's all right. What, that's what is the, Mr. Speaker? What's the number that we need? Two thirds. Two thirds for what? If if there aren't enough people here, will oh, we no, need two thirds? Number, we're fine. We're fine. Okay. I take it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We, we're, yeah. To answer the member's question, I, to conduct business on a rec as we normally do, we have to be above two sixty seven. We have fallen below 267, and as the member knows, that when we fall below that number, we need a two-thirds vote to pass anything. If we fall below 200, then we can't do anything. But you're right, we are in uh, needing a two-thirds majority to pass on this question. Would you speak? Yeah, and Representative Smith. 
yeah, I'll just repeat the question. Yeah. The question before the House is, shall the member continue under unanimous consent? The chair recognizes the member from uh, Charlestown, Representative Smith, for parliamentary inquiry. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If I know that you are the nonpartisan leader of this House, and if I find it ironic that any partisan leader of this House is the one making an admonition to the body, then would I vote against the pending motion? The question before the House is the motion shall the member continue. The chair recognizes uh, Representative Reed for parliamentary inquiry. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, if I know that the member who was previously speaking did not make any derogatory remarks to anyone, but was acting out of a heartfelt need to have this House come together, and if I know that in recent months and years we've become very polarized and we've sincerely done damage to each other and hurt each other and have caused good faith policy making to become almost impossible. And Mr. Speaker, if I know that I as a Democrat have very, very dear friends in this body who are Republicans and that friendship was only made possible when we listened to each other, listened to what was hurting each other and gave each other a chance to talk, would I now allow the member to continue? The, the House will be in order. The question before the House is the motion, shall the member be allowed to continue? If you're in favor, you'll press the green button. If you're opposed, you'll vote, press the red button. Voting stations will be open for 30 seconds. Thanks, Tim. Representative Massimilla. <laughs> Representative Cahill had a problem. Oh, you're all set. If all members present had an opportunity to vote, the House will be attentive to the state of the vote. With 210 yay and 54 nay, the motion carries with the two by the necessary two-thirds vote. The member may continue. I have very little left. Democratic, of all of us. Democratic institutions are fragile. They rest upon a bedrock of civility and decorum, mutual trust, and mutual respect. Disagreement is expected and welcomed. But in the end, we are all members of a body asked and tasked with doing well for all of our citizens. I implore all members of this body to remember this, acknowledge the fragility of democracy and of the Republican institutions that form the framework of our civil society. At the very least, I end by asking us all to remember that most elemental of ethical guidelines, do unto others as you would have others do unto you. Thank you. The House will be in order. Yeah. Representative Lay moves that the House stand in recess for the purpose of instruction of bills, receiving Senate messages, enroll bill amendments, and enroll bill reports. Are you ready for the question? All the member has asked for a division. That's in order. Members will take their seats. This will be a division vote. Once again, we must ask you to turn on your voting stations. If you chip a nail, it's your own fault.
Are you awesome? Just make sure your stations are on. The House will be in order. Representative Lee moves that the House stand in recess for the purpose of introduction of bills, re receiving Senate messages, enroll bill amendments, and enroll bill reports. If you're in favor, you'll press the green button. If you're opposed, you'll press the red button. Voting stations will be open for 30 seconds. Everybody's voted. Have all members uh, present had an opportunity to vote? The House, the House will be in order. The House will be attentive to the state of the vote. <laughs> Who wants to stay? With 249 yay and 11 nay, the motion carries. The House is in, re the house is in recess until the call of the chair. Please push your attendance button for mileage. <laughs> 